Shalom. Kohlaimla Yahweh. Bahashim. Yahweh Shai. Bahashim. Rekakadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you on another lesson entitled, Hebrews 10 and 26. So I just wanted to do a response lesson to a uh, live stream that I saw earlier today, not knowing if the person asking the question was being sincere or not. But I'm going to go ahead and go into it. So the Most High has already preserved an elect that are that are abiding under the secret place of the Most High, the tabernacle of the Lord, which starts with this doctrinal truth. And those that, it, that he's going to judge has already been predetermined. Matter of fact, let's go... Let's start off with 2nd Edges 9, verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed. This is telling you already. This is talking about the hopeful elect that believe. Let's keep going. Verse 8, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. That is talking about those that abide in the secret place of the Lord. The refuge of this word. Let's prove that. Let's go to Psalms 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my power, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence, from judgment, which starts with this nuclear fire. Those are the arrows of the Lord. And the other troubles, Jacob's trouble. Verse, let's go to verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So we are abiding in the refuge of the Lord. This full doctrine. His truth shall be our shield and buckler. See, why you think King David said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, which starts with this doctrine. But the two-thirds, let's keep going. Let's go down to verse 9. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. See that? So that's why I pulled up this image. So the word of truth provides us protection. A fortress is a defensive position, a barrier, 
a wall of the fence. But the two thirds are have made lies their refuge. Matter of fact, let's go to Isaiah 28, verse 14. See, I'm going to show you. So the two thirds have already been predestined and the hopeful elect or the remnant have already been predestined, pre-selected. We read that in 2nd Edges 9, verse 8. But this is the two-thirds. Isaiah 28, verse 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. So right, right now, that's the house of Saul. Let's go to verse 15. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. See the difference? So the two-third Israelites are dwelling under the shadow of Egypt, trusting on the walls of Jericho or under the shadow of Egypt. We can read about that in Isaiah chapter 30 and chapter 31. Let's read that again. Because we have said, we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. So that overflowing scourge are judgments, civil wars, martial law, nuclear missiles, followed by laser and chariot fire. But the elect are dwelling, let's go back to it, Psalms 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Jump down to verse 9 again. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. So what is this telling us about Hebrews 10 and 26? A remnant of preordained elect are abiding under the safe house of the Lord. His protection his refuge, predetermined. Matter of fact, let's go to 2nd Ezra 2. So that is a set number, predetermined. 2nd Ezra 2, verse 40. See? Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up these of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. What is that we just read? Predestiny. So this pavilion has a head count. The head count are the remnant of the elect, already predetermined. But if you've made lies your refuge, then you're not invited. So we're going to read that. Let's go to um, Hebrews 10, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, being cleansed by the word of truth. Verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession 
of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So we read in 2 Edges chapter 9, verse 7 and verse 8, the hopeful elect have faith by works, abiding in this word. They believe and are going to be saved. Verse 24, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaken the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. What assembly? Abiding under the house of the Lord. The full true gospel. Verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. That's the two-thirds that have made lies their refuge. Where is that at? We read it. Isaiah 28, verse 15. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement when the overflowing when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. So these are the two-thirds that are embracing the face of the serpent. What is lies and death? Really, that's the kingdom of Esau and Edom. The face of the serpent. Let's go to Sirach 21 and 2. Remember, a face carries a doctrine. That's why we use the expression, I'm not going to put my face behind that. <coughs> See? Sirach 21 verse 2. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion slaying the souls of men. So this house or refuge of lies is embedded with pseudoscience, false religion, doctrines of men. See? So that face carries a doctrine the house or refuge of lies. But the face of the Lord or his refuge, let's see. Let's go to Psalms 119 and verse 135. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant and teach me thy statutes. So the face of of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is this word, but the face of the serpent, pseudoscience, false doctrine, false religion, a refuge of lies. So it's all about the doctrine, and by predestiny, the hopeful elect of the remnant are abiding under this doctrinal tabernacle. See, let's go to 1 Timothy 1, verse 3. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. As I besought thee to abide at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. 
Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and faith unfeigned. Did we not just read about that pure heart which is connected to this doctrine of charity? Where is that at? <clears throat> See? Hebrews 10 and 22. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, washed by the word of truth. Pursuant to Ephesians 5 and 26 and John 15 and 3. See? So everything points back abiding in the house of the Lord, which starts with his wise counsel, the secret place of the Lord. It's secret because it's only intended for a small remnant. Go to 2 John chapter 1, verse 7. Go to verse 6. <clears throat> 2 John chapter 1, verse 6. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. He has sanctified his elect from the beginning. Let's go to verse 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Yahweh Mashiach is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Now, did we not read in Psalm 91 that his truth shall be our shield and buckler? Hide us in the secret place. Did not Yahweh say in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we're hiding under the word made flesh. <clears throat> Second John chapter 1, verse 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. And that reward is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Hamashiach, have not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Hamashiach, he hath both the Father and the Son. So what do we abide in? His tabernacle, his abode, his pavilion, his secret place, a refuge of this truth. That's why we read that in Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So his truth is our shield and buckler. Let's go to verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my power in him will I trust. So we're reading about abiding in the full true doctrine of the tabernacle of David. Go back to 2 John chapter 1, verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Hamashiach have not the most high. He that abideth in the doctrine of Hamashiach. He have both the Father and the Son. All about the doctrine. So this is predestiny. The remnant of the hopeful elect, starting with the tabernacle of David, was predestined to abide in this truth. Hebrews 10 and 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, 
there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So the two-third Israelites have to get what? They have to be sentenced. They have to get exposure to this word in order to be judged. That's why King David said that this word is a snare and a trap. Let's go to Revelations, I mean, uh, Romans 11. But they have to get access to this word, exposure. Because the Most High, Yahweh Shem, Yahweh Shai, is fair. See, Romans 11, verse 7. What then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. That's the two-thirds. See that? So this is predestiny. They're abiding in the refuge of lies that we read in Isaiah chapter 28. Verse 8. Why? As it is written, that's predestiny. Bible prophecy. Romans 11, verse 8. According as it is written, God have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. So that table is this Bible. That means that they have to be given exposure to this full truth. Verse 10, let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always, broke backs. So they're bowing down to the slaughter. They're bowing the knee to Baal. False doctrine. Spiritual Sodom in Egypt. The daughter of Babylon. See that? So I use the terminology uh, broke backs. They're bowing down the knee to Baal. They've been blinded. And they're not abiding in the secret place of the Lord. His holy tabernacle, his sanctuary, which is separate, severed from the masses, severed from the two thirds. His elect of the remnant of the house of Jacob and of the house of David. Hebrews 10 and 26. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying off. Oh. All praises to Yahweh Shem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. We got next, Lord willing. Barak a thumb, Kwam Yesharala, and Abad Babal. Shalom.